transfers of matter and energy through the principles of comparative theology. I claim that you cannot, that that is actually a category error. You are talking about, by, uh, sorry, comparative theology in the wrong terms. What about something that concerns me a lot? The International Declaration of the Rights of the Mentally Ill. How can we re re reduce that to matters of molecules banging around in the dark? I don't believe so. What about the concept of tomorrow? Tomorrow hasn't happened. I don't believe tomorrow, which we all understand, every language understands tomorrow, I don't believe that that can be transformed or transmogrified into something where molecules are banging into each other. A national anthem. What happens when you cross the border? Does you, do your molecules change? I don't think so. And overspending your credit card. Well, it would be good to be able to go to court and say, excuse me, Your Honour, but my molecules made me do it. I don't think this makes any sense at all. And when Danette claims that these mental concepts are biological in nature, I believe he profoundly misunderstands the concept of biology. Now, my, in my view, he, he confuses provenance with ontology. That is to say, he confuses where something comes from with its actual nature. Provenance is, just means where it comes from. And it's actually used more in terms of something that's fairly expensive, like an antique or a, a bottle of very high-class wine um, or uh, an, art, uh, an object of art of some form. But we can use it here. He is saying that if the, if the mind comes from something biological, then it is biological in its own nature. But I believe that is a mistake. The mind is not biological. It is of something totally removed, and it is not, irredu it is not reducible to the molecular substrate that subserves it. Now, his virtual machine that he makes such a big deal of is dualism by another name. It has all the properties of Descartes' mind substance except immortality. It has no additional explanatory power. It doesn't say anything about its internal workings. It is of no predictive value when it comes to understanding what is meant by computation. How can we understand uh, comparative theology, for example, in terms of this virtual machine? All we could do is say it's a virtual concept but I don't believe that takes us any further. I think it is fair to say that mind and brain are most emphatically not the same thing. They are not of the same nature. They are not of the same ontology. Brain does not explain mind, and in my view, Daniel Dennett is nothing but a closet dualist. Now, on the other side of the United States, at the University of California in Berkeley in San Francisco, we have John Searle, who, as this picture shows, was been 50 years at Berkeley. And they had a fest trip for him earlier this year. Uh, and I think he's a very distinguished and um, very senior, very distinguished philosopher. He's made a lot of major contributions. But I'm going to argue that his biological naturalism is not one of them. He has said, excuse me, if mind and body are truly different in nature, there could be no point of contact between them. Well, yes, but hang on, let's be a bit careful before we make such a wild and sweeping claim. He's gone on further. I think dualism is false. I do not believe that we live in two worlds, the mental and the physical. In fact, he also goes on in that quote to say, I don't believe we live in three worlds, which is a reference to Popper and Eccles from about 1978. He says, dualism in any form makes the status and existence of consciousness utterly mysterious. Well, does it? I'm not so sure that it does. He continues on slide 29, Above all, consciousness is a biological phenomenon. We should think of consciousness as part of our ordinary biological history, along with digestion, growth, mitosis and meiosis. Uh, those mitosis and meiosis are the um, processes of cell division. He, it's different as some other point, he adds photosynthesis and the secretion of bile to this. So he's saying the contents of the conscious mind are of the same order as the secretion of bile. He also then must accept that the, the, excre the, sorry, the secretions of his mind as a biological phenomenon are of the same order as 
is excretory functions because that is exactly what it is. Secretion of bile and excretion of feces are matters of the same order. A concept of uh, the national anthem or the gross annualized per capita national debt, uh, these things are not of the same order as feces. And I do not believe that uh, John Sewell can make them, be, uh, can transform our understanding of them to the point where we all start to believe that. He says, consciousness is caused by brain processes and is a higher level feature of the brain system. Okay, it is caused by brain processes. I don't think anybody who needs to be, who wishes to be taken seriously these days would say otherwise. And it is a higher level feature of brain, the brain system. Right, immediately, as soon as he says higher level feature, he is opting for a dualist model. He is saying it is not of the same order as the, uh, sorry, as the physical structure of the brain. He continues on slide 30. Consciousness is a biological phenomenon like any other. Uh, in fact, later he says it derives from the particular functional organization of the brain. This proposition, he claims, is not up for grabs. There's no argument. He's not going to entertain any argument on that point. Well, I don't think he has to. All he has to do is stop claiming that consciousness is a biological phenomenon because it's not a biological phenomenon. Um, urine is a biological phenomenon. Pain may be a biological phenomenon, but the perception of pain is not. Quote, he continues, quote, The consciousness of the brain is not something over and above the, natural, the neuro neuronal phenomena, but rather a state that a neuronal system is in. Well, that's trying to have a bet both ways. I don't think that he clearly understands the nature of biology. 